In this video, we're going to take a look at File Server Resource Manager. And we're going to take a look at some of the features within there. What I have here in my test environment is a server named Server1. It's a member of the domain. And its IP address is automatic, as well as a Server2, also a member of the domain, also with an automatic IP address. So both of these machines can communicate with each other and since they're on the domain this one, server 1, is going to act as my file server and server 2 is going to be like a client to me and I'm going to do some testing with it. So the first thing we need to do to get file server resource manager working is add roles and features. Now you probably noticed the file and storage services role is already at least partially installed. So when we go down to install roles, we're actually adding within the file and iSCSI services, we're adding the file server resource manager. When we choose that, it will add a couple of more components. It'll add the file server role component as well as the remote server administration tools. We want to add those features because that's our way to manage the server. We shouldn't need anything else at this time, and we can install that additional role service. Meanwhile, while that's getting set up, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set up a new file share so that we can work with it. I'm going to just go into my C drive. This is just a fresh install of Windows 2012 R2 and I'm going to make a folder called accounting files and I'm going to go into properties and I'm going to share this out my preferred way of sharing this out is to use the advanced sharing button it does give me the most granular control and I feel it's a little bit more clear cut so we're going to go into advanced sharing and share the folder as I always like to do I try to get rid of any spaces in any of my share names. We're going to find that that makes life a little bit easier when we have uh, scripting to do or um, anytime we need to use command line, uh, even some anytime when space is a delimiter, sometimes even in a GUI environment. I'm also going to go into permissions and because I'm just doing some testing, I'm going to let security kind of be loose here. I'm going to allow everyone full control at the share level. Generally, you'd want that as strict as possible. And then I'm going to allow my accounting group. I made a group just for this purpose, named Accounting Files. I have a user, his name is Bob, and he's a member of Accounting, which is a global group. Accounting is a member of Accounting Files, which is a domain local group. In another video, I explain the group nesting, and I explain that accounts should go into global groups, which are named after the collection of users, and then the global group should go into a domain local group, which is named after the permission we're granting. It self-documents your network, as well as it follows the Microsoft-recommended AGDLP uh, naming conventions. So I'll say OK to this, and I'm going to allow the accounting users via the accounting files group the modify permission. So when Bob logs in over here on server 2 he's going to be able to access it through the share because the, the everyone group has all the permissions that they need as well as he has permissions on the NTFS side, the file system side. So we have a share, it's, it's set up and it's ready for Bob. My install is still going over here, so I'm going to jump over here and log in as Bob just to make sure that everything's working swell. I'm another user, but I am on the domain, so I am Bob. Over here, we can see the installation still running. I'm logging in as Bob over here, and in a moment it'll be ready for us to use. My installation succeeded on server 1, and Bob's logged in on server 2. 
I can close this window out and now I should have a new utility in here file server resource manager we'll get into that in just a second but first let's make sure that Bob can access that shared folder if he types in backslash backslash server one backslash accounting files he can access that folder folders currently empty but he could also add in a new file if he wanted to this one happens to be a text document named test file and he can modify any files that he wants because he has the permissions to do so and then jumping over here if I look in accounting files yes the file really did appear and it was made by Bob okay so there's a couple of components here that are kinda cool with regards to uh, file server resource manager we're gonna start with quota management in quota management we have a couple of things that we can do we can create quotas and we can also create quota templates a quota template is kind of the framework the design of a future quota and then you can use quotas to actually apply that template quota templates are optional but they can make life easier so I'm gonna to choose to use a quota template and I'm gonna create a special quota template for Bob just because we want to test out to see exactly what's gonna happen here when we use this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this Bob's quota template and I'm gonna give him a very very low limit I'm going to say his limit is one kilobyte. I can also add in some notification thresholds here too, which is kind of cool. In here, I can send email messages when his quota gets kind of close to its limit. I can write things to the event log if I prefer to just simply log things into the event log and monitor from there. I can run commands or scripts, a uh, batch file that could perhaps do something else within that uh, directory. Maybe, maybe I could go in and compress all of his data once he starts to reach a uh, nearby threshold. Or I can generate some reports automatically. And that'll save those reports into C storage reports. So in this case, maybe he hits this 85% threshold for his quota. I generate a report that could pull in information about any duplicate files he has anytime two files are exactly the same any files that haven't been accessed in a long time any large files that might be taking up the lion's share of that particular folders quota and by identifying the large files maybe he says oh these three or four files really don't need to be there they can be somewhere else I can move them out and then not take up all of my quota space so I'm gonna leave those off for now just because I don't have anything quite to test on yet but later on I will I'm gonna go back in here just to verify this again even though I said okay to this I actually created a notification threshold that doesn't send an email doesn't do event log, doesn't run a command, and doesn't generate a report. So it's kind of a silly threshold here, so I'm just going to remove that one. That's not necessary. Real simple quota here. Bob's quota template, one kilobyte of space, and a hard quota, meaning he's not allowed to cross that threshold, that limit. Oops, can't have that quotation mark. It's one of those things where we should try and keep our names as simple as possible. And I got a little too fancy there. Bob's quota template, no quote. And there's the template. Now it's not applied to anything yet. It's simply an example of a template. What I can do then with the quotas section is I can create a quota. And maybe I set this quota path on that share that I just created. the accounting files folder 
and I can apply the quota template, Bob's quota template, which is a one kilobyte hard limit, a hard cap, if you will. Now notice when I did this, I didn't specify Bob. Other than the fact that I named it Bob's template, I didn't specify Bob as my target for this. So if I go over here and I'm Bob and I go to create another document, guess what? There's not enough space. In reality, there is enough space on the volume, but there's not enough space for Bob because he's exceeded his quota template, his, his defined quota. Every single user has this limitation. I can edit those quota properties later on if I want to. And maybe I change this to a soft quota. Now remember, this is the real quota. A quota template is just a starting point. It fills in a lot of the spaces for you, so you don't have to recreate them every single time you decide to set up a new quota on a path. So even though we're based on that, I can still change anything I want within that quota. In this case, I'm going to switch to a soft quota. Now, a soft quota allows me to create a new file. And I can still save data even though I've exceeded my limit. So what good is this? Well, in this case, it does allow me to set that quota, and it does allow me to monitor the use of that quota. Even though I've exceeded it, I'm allowed to. But it gives me some management ability. It monitors that folder for me to see exactly how much of that quota is in use. The next thing we're going to take a look at here 